So. You guys are pretty frisky today. You can tell they're wild animals. Dinner is served. Animal keeper René Walter thought he knew what horses like to eat. But today they're even ignoring their favorite food, carrots. The last of these horses was captured in the 1960s and taken to a zoo. They would have died out if European zoos hadn't developed an extensive breeding program. Humans nearly wiped them out, so it was up to humans to save them. People took over the horses' natural habitat and hunted them to the point where they nearly became extinct. That's why you don't find them in the wild anymore. Then people at zoos and similar facilities felt obligated to try and help them to return to nature just like they've done with other species. But behavioral biologist Dr. Anna Berger says teaching them to survive on their own is going to require a lot of work. Some of the horses are housed on this game preserve near Berlin. They're fenced in for their own safety. New horses have a hard time fitting in here. For example, it doesn't occur to them to put on extra fat as winter approaches. They're used to life at the zoo where they get regular meals and they figure it's too much work to put on all that fat for winter. So they stroll around the meadows instead. They don't take things seriously during the first year, but they sure do during the second. Scientists have conducted extensive research to try to determine exactly how the Chevalsky horses will have to adapt to be able to survive in the wild. They've outfitted this trough with various devices that allow them to find out how much water each individual horse drinks. A scale in the floor measures the horse's weight gain as they drink. Dr. Berger says horses that drink a lot of water probably wouldn't do well in a natural environment that's dry. There are other problems, like the horse's hooves, that would complicate life in the wild. At certain times of the year, their hooves grow way too long. That makes it really difficult for them to run properly. They slow down and trip over their own legs. That makes it tough for them to survive in the wild. It makes them easy prey for predators. The Chevalsky horses are native to the steppes of Central Asia, and specifically Mongolia. There, the horses are called taki, which means spirit. Efforts continue to resettle the horses in their natural habitat. But there have been problems. At first, the horses couldn't adapt to extreme Mongolian winters, and many of them died. But they learned to adapt to the weather, to predators, and to the inhospitable landscape. There are now an estimated 3,000 Chevalsky horses worldwide. Dr. Berger is pretty pleased about that. She's known this horse, called Alina, for 22 years. Alina will probably stay here at the game reserve near Berlin for the rest of her life. But some of the other animals may be sent to Mongolia. It won't be easy for Dr. Berger to see them go. It's like when your children leave home. You're both happy and sad. <laughs> Perhaps Dr. Berger and other experts can apply the lessons they've learned here to help preserve other endangered animals.